I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it. I like to move it, move it. Okay, we're going to look at migration. Now you can see with this map where you have net migration rates back in 2008, net migration is immigration or those moving into a country minus emigration, which are those moving out of a country. Now to understand migration, we first have to look at movement. To start out, let's look at absolute versus relative distance. Now absolute is the distance between two points, basically a straight line, or if you're talking about a straight route across a road. Relative distance, and the reason why you see a beltway around Washington, D.C., is when you're measuring distance in terms of cost and time. Now, there are three major types of movement we can talk about. The first is cyclic movement, or basically short movements, which make up your activity space, or what's also called your action space. Now, this kind of movement deals with repeated actions, such as seasonal movement down to Florida, the snowbirds from up north, or commuting, which is usually from the suburbs to the city. But as we've seen an increase in tertiary, quaternary, and quinary jobs, there's also reverse commuting, where people go from the cities into the suburbs. And of course, back again. And nomadism is also an example of cyclic movement, where people travel from place to place, but come back to where they had begun. Nomadism is dwindling across the world, but it can still be found in parts of Asia and Africa. Now, periodic movement, like cyclic movement, involves returning home. But periodic movement involves a longer period of time away from the home base than cyclic movement does. A common type of periodic movement is migrant labor. For example, there are millions of workers in the United States and tens of millions worldwide, such as you see the Mexicans in Texas or Turks in Germany. And there are millions of students who stay at dorms or other apartments when they're off at college. And also military service, where people can be stationed for months at a time but then come home. Now, a specialized form of periodic movement is transhumance, a system of pastoral farming in which ranchers move livestock according to the seasonal availability of pastures. This is a periodic form of movement because it involves a long period of residential relocation, unlike classic nomadism. As you can see in the right-hand side here, in Switzerland, for example, cattle or sheep, in this case, are driven up the mountain slopes to high, fresh pastures during the summer and then are brought back down during the wintertime. Now, when movement results in permanent relocation across significant distances, it is classified as migration. The process of migration involves the long-term relocation of an individual, household, or larger group to a new locale outside the community of origin. We can look at international migration. As you can see, migrants moving into the United States from Latin America. We do see that there is a great deal of permanent relocation, but many are guest workers who receive part-time visas to work for a short period of time and send remittances or money back home. And there's also intranational or internal migration. If you take a look on this map, you can see where the center of the United States population was back in 1790 and how over time and over the decades, it has moved further west and slightly south. So the center of US population today is in Missouri. And because of the affluence of the average American, the US population is the most mobile in the world today. Also, this is due to our extensive highway system. So each year, more than 5 million Americans move between different states, and over 35 million people move within their own state. Too bad you will die.